COVID. This we have known really from the beginning. I remember knowing this in, in February and March. And that is that COVID attacks different ages differently. People have different ages differently. That COVID is a disease deadly to old people. People who have not that many years left to live anyway. And it is not deadly for most other people. So here's a graph, and, and I, you know, there are lots of these graphs. Here's one. You know, this is a case fatality rate by age. Um, so the infection fatality rate is actually significantly lower than this because there are many more infections than there are cases, right? And what you really care about is the infection fatality rate. But since we don't know exactly how many infections there are because we only can discover an infection if we test, and, and most people are asymptomatic, so they never get tested, so we don't know that they have it. Um, what we've got is a case fatality rate, but it doesn't matter for the purposes of what I'm arguing. It doesn't matter, because look at this. If you're under the age of 10, the probably, this is four countries, South Korea, Spain, China, Italy. But this is true in any four countries. You can take any four countries and do this calculation. It comes out the same. If you're under 10 years old, the probability of you dying from getting COVID is basically zero. Zero. So if you are under the age of 30 and you get the virus, for all intents and purposes, the probability of you dying from this is zero. If you're under 50, it's less than 0.1% probably. It's really, really low. Again, particularly if you're very young. The younger you are, the less this affects you. Yes, I know children will spread it. To whom? To their parents who are about 50. But God, can't you just tell people don't put children with old people for a year? Is it better to shut everybody down? Is it better to stop schools than to basically tell people don't see your grandparents? Don't see your grandparents. You don't stop. I mean, how has it worked stopping the spread? Hasn't worked. But you don't care about the spread. Why do you care about the spread? Why should anybody care about the spread if it spreads to those under 50 years old? You only should care about it spreading to the population really over 70 years old. Anybody under 70, why do you care if they get it? Why do you care if it spreads to them? Let the children and the teenagers and anybody under 50, 60 years old run around and spread it. Who cares? What you care about is old people who can die from it, getting it. And yes, some young people die. Yes, some young people have complications. But if you understand anything about statistics, the number is trivial, insignificant, certainly not worthy of public policy. Certainly not worthy of shutting down businesses, killing people's life savings, destroying jobs, destroying lives, bringing about depression and suicide, and all the consequences of locking people at home without being able to go out. If you're vulnerable, lock yourself at home. Why am I supposed to be locked up? Because you're vulnerable. And even with the vulnerable, even with all the vulnerable in our society, death rates of people under 50 years old, or really under 60 years old, are trivial, minimal, insignificant. Including the vulnerable. These statistics don't exclude the vulnerable. So, instead of actually dealing with this issue, 
which means isolating old people. To the best of our ability, you can't do it perfectly. Some old people will die from COVID. But instead of focusing all our energy on hundreds of millions of people who are young and healthy and have no problems and can handle this disease easily, instead of spending all our resources, all our energy, all our effort, all our money on those people, if we took all that focus, all that energy, all that planning, all that money and just focused on isolating old people, this would be easy. And you wouldn't have to disrupt the economies of the entire Western world. And on top of that, why are we so eager to sacrifice young people for old people? Old people are not the ones losing their jobs. Old people are not the ones who are having their businesses go under. Old people are not the ones who are losing because of these lockdowns and these restrictions on liberty. Young people are. And it's fascinating to me, and this is not just true of today, but it's not just true of COVID, but this is generally a, a, a phenomenon in our culture. We are happy and eager to sacrifice, to sacrifice young people to old people. Daniel says, he just wants everyone to be paid to stay home like every other reasonable country. How knows other reasonable countries doing? France, Germany, England. They're doing terribly in spite of the fact that they paid people to stay home. And where's the money come from to pay people to stay home? It's being printed. You're getting massive debt. Who's going to pay that debt? Your children and grandchildren, young people. In every dimension, we have no problem. We have no concern about sacrificing our young to our old, which is bizarre. It is a bizarre moral code that says that we should sacrifice those that have a long lifespan to those who have a short lifespan. I'm in the, I'm getting close to the risk group and I'm advocating for this. It is insanity and immoral, a moral travesty that we're allowing the fact that a lot of 80 year olds, a lot of 85 year olds are going to die from COVID, allowing that to be justification to destroy the lives of a lot of 20 year olds 30-year-olds, 40-year-olds, and 50-year-olds. How can that ever be right? Now, of course, we do that all the time anyway, right? Medicare? Well, we lavish health care, end-of-life treatment on the old at whose expense? At the expense of the young. Who's paying Medicare? The young for the old. Social Security is a pyramid scheme in which young people pay for old people. And as long as there are enough young people to pay, the scheme continues. Medicare is much worse because Medicare, the old spend four times more than they ever paid into the system. Now, okay, these are systems forced on us by government, but COVID we're embracing voluntarily. Or we're not objecting. Of course, we're not objecting to Medicare and Medicaid either. When are young people going to wake up to the fact that they're being exploited? When are young people going to wake up to the fact that they're being sacrificed at the altar of another month's life or another year's life to somebody as old? It is truly disgusting. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being told that I'm not using U.S. data. So here's U.S. data. This is U.S. data from New York as of November 29th. But again, this would include all U.S. data. You can just extrapolate from New York to the rest of the country. It's exactly the same. Look at what's going on. This is deaths per 100 population in the population. Here's what happens from 0 to 17. Nothing. Less than one person in 100,000 has died from COVID if they're under 17. I mean, all the way again 
55. 127 people have died out of 100,000. My guess is most of the 127, if not all of them, are those with pre-existing conditions. If you're basically healthy and under 55, the risk of you dying from this disease is zero or as close to zero as is meaningful in life. Why you would change your behavior, why the state would require you to change your behavior, demand that you change your behavior, and you just go, oh, okay, what the hell? And yes, I get it, they were trying to prevent infections, but you can prevent infections by other ways, by focusing on the 65 and older, and look, the real issue is 75 and older. That's where it's get to 1,712 per 100,000 in the population. That's 1.7%. Is that 1.7%? Yeah, that's 1.7%. That's a lot. That's a lot of people. That, this is dangerous. All of this, that's not dangerous. I mean, maybe a little bit here. But again, if you take out pre-existing conditions, it's basically zero. I mean, if I was a benevolent dictator, right. and I'm not advocating for this, but if you had to lock people down, then you could say, if you're over 65 years old, you cannot leave your home and you cannot accept visitors and we'll provide you with meals three times a day delivered to your home. And that would still be cheaper than what we're doing today. Still be cheaper than what we're doing today. In turn, anybody over 65, I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying if you were going to do something like this, that makes so much more sense than sacrificing this entire group, their livelihood, their mental well-being, for the sake of this group. Spending trillions and trillions of dollars. Whoops, what did I do here? Trillions and trillions of dollars. To save one group while burdening that debt to another group. The 80-year-olds are not going to pay the debt that is being used to protect them. Young people are going to pay that debt. And the best way for young people to prevent old people from getting the virus is not to go near them. It's to avoid them. And you know what? That's a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper than the trillions and trillions of dollars that it costs this economy to shut down. I mean, we are literally worshiping another month or another year of people's lives and are willing to do human sacrifice to protect it. And it's horrific. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals 
uh, and uh, and show your support for all for, for for the work for the value hopefully you're receiving from this and uh, and of course don't forget if you're not a subscriber even if you even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up you'll know what shows are on when they're on you'll get notified right so um, yes like share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.